from NG Blossom. Yeah, and you know, we talked about the uh, the roster swap earlier with, with Faulted coming in, and it does look like he is going to be playing mid. So we will see Skiz potentially in the jungle this game instead of, you know, the usual mid lane we've seen him in. And I'm going to be curious to kind of see, you know, if they, it is Skiz mid, how is he going to hold up in the jungle? Or is Skiz jungle, how is he going to hold up in the jungle? As we finally get into champ select, I'm ready. I love playoffs. It's the best time. So with this semifinals game, it looks like they're going to go ahead and lose their first two bands. Um, Jake, if you're Glacier Rising Phoenix, how are you looking to capitalize on this, that you have two free bands in the very beginning? What are you, what are you looking to take away? The big thing with that is now you kind of get the pick of the litter in terms of power picks, right? So we've talked about how we have both these players like Gangplank, both these players can play Ornn, um, Jeremy Flip likes Set, right? So there's a lot of versi or volatility in the top lane matchups. Um, so we might see like a last pick in the top lane, but it can we can really see some like forces coming out um, where, you know, Glacierizing Phoenix, they can force you know, Jer or the side of NG Blossom to really kind of choose what they want to first pick, whether it's a jungle pick like Olaf or Graves for Exasperated, because they're probably going to be giving up a whole bunch of stuff like we've we've talked about before. And we see Senna and Caitlyn bands already coming out from the side of Glacier Rising Phoenix, putting that heavy focus on the bot lane. You know, we talk like I said, so top lane, you know, is kind of up in the air. Uh, I guess there's not much line pickable champions, so they're not worried about banning anything there. And it is surprising to see some of Black Oreo Cookies champions falling through. Maybe we'll get a Syndra, maybe we'll get a LeBlanc. And Jeremy Flip opts to, or NG Blossom opts to ban Orn. Interesting. We talked about how contested this Caitlyn might be as Cantonator and Epic Fail Guy both play the champion fairly well. Um, you know, it's not that surprising to see the Caitlyn banned away to make sure that Cantonator can't instantly just pick up that first pick as the Caitlyn, and then the Orn being taken away from both Jeremy Flip and Joey Desu, go ahead, it goes ahead and kind of uh, opens the, the top lane matchup up a little bit. We see the Ash hover here, and it's most likely going to be the lock-in, yep, for NG Blossom, first pick Ash. And, you know, even despite kind of losing their two bands, that's still in a way a win, I would say, for the side of NG Blossom, Ash, you know, solid ADC. And, you know, we see Caitlyn, like you were saying, kind of banned away already. Um, there's still a lot left up. We might see an Ezreal, because we know Epic Fail Guy loves his Ezreal. You know, Caitlyn's off the table already. Uh, Aphelios hasn't really been seen too much lately. Maybe they wait a little bit on Aphelios if they're looking for that. Uh, but I kind of expect an Ezreal to come back. And Xylandis getting all that bard practice yesterday. You know, looking to run it back. He wasn't as pop-off as we saw from the side of Troll the Noob, but he was very consistent on the Bard. And I like this. They're opting for a Graves pick. They're taking away a jungle. They know the ADCs are already locked in, so it's not like Ezreal's going anywhere yet. And they opt to take a, take a power pick here. They take away Bard, you know, lock themselves in a solid support, take in Graves. And now they have this pretty favorable jungle matchup. He doesn't lose too many jungle matchups here. Um, and we're gonna see a Jarvan hover actually coming out, so a lot of engage from the side of NG Blossom. And the Graves power pick that we've seen in, in the hands of the right player has so much potential to take over a game. He's such an aggressive early game jungler. And we're gonna see the Gangplank lock in for Jeremy Flip. They're gonna take that away from Joey Desu in the top lane. And they're gonna lock it in blind too, because they know that Epic Fail Guy really values that Ezreal, so by picking the Gangplank, they're forcing the side of Glacier Rising Phoenix to either pick one of these Gangplank counters, you know, right there, or lose the Ezreal, right? So they had to choose between the two, and we see they go for the Ezreal, so we might see a couple, you know, Gangplank's bad matchups band away here. Uh, if Joey Desu plays Vladimir, that's probably going to get taken off the table. Um, Malphite's pretty solid into Gangplank as well, so we see that taken away. And one key thing about graves uh it is a little bit of a meme but it is a relatively simple jungler to play and skiz is mainly a mid laner right so it is also an easy jungler and very strong for skiz and i think that might be important in this series right we don't really know what skiz's jungle looks like so getting him on something that's easy that's probably comfort for him is going to be pretty big in this first first game he needs to be careful, you know, because we talked about how much engage can come out of the Jarvan and the Ash, uh, able to kind of 
lock down one member um, or multiple with the Cataclysm in place. And, and then you have the Gangplank Ultimate on top of that. They have a lot of objective control and as well as a lot of really strong team fighting tools. So if Glacier Rising Phoenix does not misplay at all, um, they, they really do need to, to be careful when it comes to NG Blossom's comp as that's built right now. Because you can see Karma uh, locked in and go ahead by the Glacier Rising Phoenix might be used up there to kind of get a handle on this Gangplank as we saw Karma had a lot of success in the previous series. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see where this Karma might go. And the big thing here is we see Kalsid and Band away already and that means, you know, they're just trying to add more AoE mage teamfighters in. Actually, see, you know, Pike locked in for support. Probably, it, I mean, there's a chance it goes mid. It's more than likely a support champion coming out for XDME. However, I mean, XDME does pick last too, so it it is looking like a rumble mid, and I really like that pick. Right? We have just a whole bunch of AOE layer and damage. The only problem so far I see in this this draft is they are very reliant on ultimates. Right, we're looking at Pike R resets, Rumble Ultimate. Like early on, yes, there's a huge skirmishing potential with Rumble and J4. But we do have to talk about, you know, once J4 blows his ult, like you've said before, he's committed. Pike late game is pretty much an R bot. Obviously, hooks still catch people out. You can still have some good stuns. But the side of Glacier Rising Phoenix has a good amount of consistent damage. Like you were talking about, we have the Karma shielding and Joey Desu. I mean, if that goes top lane for him again, we've seen how much he likes playing this Karma top. We've seen it twice yesterday, or was it all three? Was it all three games yesterday for Joey Desu? All three that they won. I believe. And you know, we've we've seen the proficiency he has, and it is a pretty decent pick in the Gangplank. Um, you can't kill the barrels from range. You know, you, you don't mind kind of poking and farming up a little bit. Your whole job on the Karma is to just survive in the laning phase. So we're going to have to see what the mid lane impact is going to be, because on the analyst desk, you know, Brown was talking about can the side of Glacier Rising Phoenix expose, exasperated, and then the jungle, you know, punish the jungler. And when you have a rumble in the mid lane to, to kind of roam with that J4, and even we're talking about Pike here, it's very scary. And Jeremy flips Gangplank, is one of the scariest things in the league. We've seen him, you know, 10 to 11 CS a minute, you know, hitting him at 170 CS, 16 minute mark, just going insanely strong. And if he gets left on an island top lane, it, it's scary when he shows up to these team fights. So I, I think a, a big thing to notice here is we have three TPs for the side of Glacier Rising Phoenix. So NG Blossoms one. So that's a lot of Glacier Rising Phoenix members able to respond very quickly to some of these objectives and some of these early game fights in order to bring enough bodies to pile on to NG Blossom to kind of take them out of the early game or maybe even get some surprise flanks for these early objectives. Um, you know, I'm still kind of worried about Glacier Rising Phoenix though because Jeremy Flip's Gangplank is a menace in the top lane. You know, and if he's able to efficiently farm as he's, you know, very well known for and he's able to get those items quickly get the level 13 power spike jeremy flip's going to be able to take over this game through the top lane yes uh, i think definitely one of the things to note you know the first tps for 80 carries tend to be used right back into the lane right so typically the first tp we see goes right back into to bot lane and then from there it's roaming around the map so you know, we only really have the Mordekaiser TP in terms of probably early game plays. I'm curious to see if maybe that first TP for Ezreal does get used, and maybe we see a hard, like, top lane dive, right? Maybe we push Rumble in, and we walk up there, and we tower dive Jeremy Flip early, and we kind of set the pace for the game that we're not just going to let him free farm. We're going to put a lot of pressure on the top side of the map. Um, in our series yesterday with Glacier Resident Phoenix Trigger Happy, we talked about the safety of Bard, right? How he has the portal to kind of move around, do some cheeky plays. But also, with paired with the Ezreal and the Bard, you can kind of leave them on an island, right? We have E Flash for Ezreal, we have Bard's Tempered Fate, Bard's Portal. So even if you leave them on an island, there's a decent chance they can avoid any plays, and they can even stall towers from going down. So we'll have to see, you know, if we put some pressure topside for Glacier Rising Phoenix, can we get early rifts? Can we punish Jeremy Flip for picking a scaling gangplank? Or will he get to scale for free 
and Exasperated and Black Oreo Cookies on the Starve and Rumble kind of take over the rest of the map. I, I definitely think that's going to be a big point of contention, as Black Oreo Cookies is going to be pretty much able to always push in Faulted on Mordekaiser, just because of <coughs> how much you know wave clear Rumble has built into his com kit compared <coughs> to Mordekaiser's. Um, I really hope Skiz on this Graves is able to kind of get an exasperated jungle and try to slow down his tempo, take him off of his rhythm and not let him get so much early game impact. I think if he's able to do that effectively, it'll very much help Glitcher Rising Phoenix in the long run. Yeah, and you mentioned faulted on Mordekaiser. Very under talked about by us was the Mordekaiser mid pick. And in a way, it's actually a counter pick to Rumble in terms of if you're 1v1ing him and Rumble's dropping an ult in a 1v1, you can just ult away from Rumble's ult. Right? Boom, there goes all Rumble's R damage. And Rumble can be a bully, but with, you know, as the game goes on, his R becomes more and more the biggest biggest thing on him. And if we see Mordekaiser with Leandre's Rylai's Mercury treads, you know, there's a very real chance this Mordekaiser just doesn't die to Rumble and can win this 1v1. I really hope we can see Xylandis, you know, keep a handle on this bot lane because we saw how much Troll the Noob yesterday was able to kind of outroam him. Um, and XDME, you know, on Pike, Pike's an extremely roaming champion, but Bard is as well. So I hope either both supports are roaming at the same time to kind of work against each other, or Xylandis is able to kind of keep a handle on him to make sure that XDME is not able to make a lot of impacts around the map. As we know, Pike's able to do that pretty effectively in the early levels, as a lot of champions um, can't really deal with his damage to the CC chain early. And important to note, we do have Pike rocking Hail of Blades, right? So he's not going Aftershock. He's going to have no extra resistances, you know, built into his kit. He's going for this huge skirmish potential with the, you know, Hail of Blades. He's going to hit a hook and he's going to auto attack the crap out of whoever he hooks. And they're going to try to blow that person up. So we're going to have to see, you know, if this Halo Blade style pays off because he doesn't even have Resolve Secondary, right? So when he gets poked in lane, he doesn't have Revitalize, no Second Wind, uh, no Demolish or anything like that. So it's just relying on the Pike passive to heal. And that's, I mean, that's a lot of healing. Don't get me wrong. So we'll have to see because I always love seeing Pike. Uh, very fun champion to watch. Love seeing Bard, fun champion. So I'm already liking kind of the matchups we have in this game. It has the potential to be explosive. Uh, aside from Karma, you know, boring champ in the top lane, but I respect the pick. It is pretty good into Gangplank. Pretty standard five-point defense coming out for both these teams. You see Jeremy Flip going ahead and getting <clears throat> some of that damage off with the, the parlay. I really think top lane is going to be a snooze fest until someone makes a mistake. Because all it takes is one mistake between both of those laners to punish the other one and just knock them out of that lane yeah i mean gangplank does have orange right so he can get out of karma root so in theory you know he hits one good barrel combo he can use that movement speed burst with the combined with the fact that it slows to kind of gap close onto the karma and there is some chase potential but karma to empower w is, is a lot of healing right so even without the you know the roots really affecting gangplank chances of a kill up there are slim and solo uh i think it's gonna be decided on some jungle pressure and we see, we've had a lot of junglers starting topside, you know, starting that red buff, and we see both junglers this game straight pathing towards the top lane, right? They start on the bottom side of the map, and we're already going to see, you know, probably a skirmish around this this topside Rift Herald, potentially, as J4 looks for an early gank on Mordekaiser, and this is the problem with picking melee mids against J4. Ooh. Flag and Dragon is a little bit wide, and Fault is able to kind of just walk himself out of there, get a little bit of chunk damage off onto Exasperate. You see, now makes his way back to this top side. But a scuffle breaking out in the bot lane. Zyland is kind of taken a little bit low as XDME hits a really strong hook against him. Catinator and XDME trying to hold their own against this very poke heavy lane of Epic Fail Guy and Zylandis. You can see now Catinator kind of just able to walk up, get those free auto attacks off, and just chunk them down a little bit. And honestly, that was a little bit of lack of respect, not flashing the pike hook, right? Trusting that he could sidestep it, because if he gets hit by that, he's dead. Even with flash, right? He not level two, doesn't have heal. He gets hit by that hook, he's dead. Um, but you know, luckily he dodges it, 
And, you know, props to Faulted. He's able to, you know, recognize J4 likes to level 2 gank mid, especially when you're playing a melee mid laner. Able to, you know, dodge away from the gank, because we, we talked about Rumble's potential to roam on the map. If he gets that early lead in terms of laning, it's it's pretty doomed, right? We don't want to see Rumble roaming too early on the map if he decides to Glacierizing Phoenix. Black Oreo Cookies just shoving in Faulted as we know how much you know, wave clear potential this rumble has built into his kit, just able to melt through that wet wave. Uh, I'm really hoping to see, you know, maybe Skiz tries to react to this once he gets this clear done and maybe tries to bail out <coughs> Fault a little bit here, uh, make sure he's not shoved under tower the entire time and loses too much CS for it. But we do see Skiz kind of making his way here up to the top side, taking his you know, attention towards this top scuttle as exasperated counts counters with the bottom side scuttle. Uh, but we can see a play here coming now towards the bot lane. Hook goes wide, XDME looking to go forward. He's gonna go ahead and go for the dash. Doesn't quite connect on the Zyland as Zyland is forced to flash away. Flag and drag going forward, and that's first blood over to Cantonator. Yeah, Cantonator picks up the early first blood there, and you know, it's a little unfortunate. Uh, I mean, I feel like if you're the bot lane of Glacierizing Phoenix, right, we know, we should know he's down there. You know, we have Skiz on this top half of the map, on the Scuttle Crab. We even kind of saw him step out of the bush a little bit there. And unfortunately, just caught off guard by the gank as Skiz, you know, puts out a bunch of damage here on Black Oreo Cookies. And there's some of that relief on the pressure you were talking about, where he kind of gets a decent gank off in the mid lane and chunks his fault Black Oreo Cookies a little bit to kind of help out his mid laner. They definitely needed that to kind of get some of that pressure off of him. Um, you know, not be choked out entirely under his tower the entire time. But Black Oreo Cookies is just relentless with trying to poke out and get some of that damage on the Faulted and just make him sit back and wait. We have this first Drake coming up in about 10 seconds now. It's going to be a, a Mountain Drake. And I, I think this is going to be a, a good game for it because we're not worried about a Mountain Soul this game. Because a Mountain Soul could definitely swing this game one way or the other as the Graves pass to be able to easily stack up and how tanky this Jarvan could get when he builds resistance. As another gank comes in actually from Skiz. Skiz now dashing forward, trying to get some more damage on the Black Horror Cookies. Black Horror Cookies forced to flash, and Skiz is going to flash back as well, and he's going to pick up the kill on the Black Oreo Cookies. Yeah, and you know, we saw Faulted kind of waste his flash, you know, but respected because he was trying to follow up, unsure if Skiz would be able to finish it off with that auto. And Black Oreo Cookies kind of walked back up a little bit there, you know, he saw Graves tanking the tower shot, thought maybe he could get a cheeky return kill, gets punished for it, and Skiz doing a good job of relieving that mid lane pressure. Maybe because he's a mid laner himself, you know, he's really putting the emphasis on mid lane this game. As XDME looking for another hook in the bot lane. Hook connects onto Epic Fail Guy, Epic Fail Guy forced to Arcane Shift away, now their attention's turned over to Zyland, he's going to take that portal to safety. Really good engage here by XDME, try to open up some of that pressure for Catnator in order to get some farm in. Yeah, and there also still comes out some of that relative safety of Bard. You know, even able to portal away through that long alcove portal that we see, you know, if you're a good Bard, you can hit it. Uh, other Bards really struggle with landing it, and Xylandus is able to hit the portal. Not, not the easiest to hit in the terrain quickly when you're in the middle of a fight. And get away from the gank with the relative ease. Well, not gank. The engagement, we saw XDME, you know, E-forward. He didn't actually E-flash for the stun, kind of respecting Xylandus' ability to probably hit the portal, knowing it's just a waste of flash. And now we have both junglers on the bot side of the map. And we see Exasperated looking for the Scuttle Crab. And, you know, from here, he can go mid lane. We might see him go straight to his buff. And we have Graves kind of on the same side, but here comes this 2v2 potential. Faulted looking to get some damage off, but here comes the flag and drag forward going through, and that's going to be Mordekaiser locking him into the death realm, and that's just trying to get some safety for himself, and Black Oreo Cookies able to just keep pushing that wave forward. <laughs> XDME. Pike now invading oh. Skiz in his jungle. Skiz forced to go ahead and smite to or confirm that blue buff, and now Exasperated here to kind of make sure that Skiz backs off and not walks forward too much. But now Skiz is going to dash forward onto Catenator, forcing a flash. Pike ready to come back in, Hook connects, and he's gonna go ahead and get Un that stun. Equalizer Wombo drops down, combo. a lot of damage coming out for the team. Jeremy Flip picks up the kill onto Skiz, <laughs> and now Xylandis is getting a lot of poke here on Exasperate. Exasperate forced to walk away. Good stun lands by Xylandis. Epic Fail guy picking up that kill. 
but Black Oreo Cookies is just seeing blood, walking forward on the epic fail guy, forced back under the turret, good hook by XD Mina, full faulted off of his AD carry. Yeah, and now player. we see Black Oreo Cookies caught behind enemy lines, potentially. You know, XD and me still here to kind of protect them. Ash Arrow! Steamy lands a good stun, and they're gonna go ahead and take down Faulted. Catnator picking up that kill. Epic fail guy forced to walk away. Man, a Black Oreo Cookies says, I'm behind enemy lines for a gosh darn reason. As we see, your Catnator was actually 6 while XD and me was still level 4 there. And Black oh, Oreo Cookies overstayed. Black Oreo Cookies is taking low. Epic fail guy is gonna have to flash away from XD and me. And now XD Me is on the run. Ezreal's coming. A very, very good true shot barrage to pick up. It's that gonna kill. hit GP. And it's gonna hit up Jeremy Flip. Oh. Jeremy Flip forced to flash away from Skiz. Oh my. And a big kind of overstay there from NG Blossom. And we've actually seen this a few times in some of their games where after a good aggressive play, they have a tendency to overstay and look for more. And, you know, they are going to still be able to pick up the dragon on the back half of this. But Epic Fail Guy picking up all these kills, you know, we said his name quite a bit yesterday. Very consistent for this squad and seeing him 3-0 on the Ezreal already at, at 9 minutes is a very scary sight. Yeah, Epic Fail Guy already able to pick up that mana mutant and go ahead and get that thing stacking up, trying to get a mermana as fast as possible. You know, and the Ash opting as well for the mermana build. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested to see how much damage he can be able to put out. You know, because we know with that tier build on the Ash, it's, it's able to maximize a lot of DPS, but at the same time, it has the ability to fall off if Ash is not careful. Yeah, and w well, one of the big things that we're going to see as Ezreal's gonna spike a lot faster than Ash will, but when Ash spikes, she's gonna do so much damage with her AoE slows on these, you know, this front line, right? We kind of have Karma, Graves, Mordekaiser, right? So they're not exactly the most gap closing champions. As we see Crystal a Arrow lane. goes wide, exasperated, looking to come forward. Good stun. Tempered Fate's gonna lock up Catinator. And now here we go. Pike by, or a flash by XDME, and Catinator's gonna pick up that shutdown on Epic Fail Guy. Equalizer and here's the rumble down, trying to pick too. up the kill, and XDME is going to take down Xylandis with a good death from below. And there comes the four-man bot plays we, I was kind of talking about a little bit in Champ Select. You know, I thought maybe with the safety of Bard and Tempered Fate and Ezreal E, they could avoid some of these bot lane plays. However, this time they were caught too far up in the lane, not under their tower or anywhere safe. Uh, the only, you know consolation prize they get is they did have rift herald for mid but i mean it's only two turret plates they got and it was shared right actually looks like they were able to pick up the third turret plate with the dying breath of rift herald but even still it's not as anywhere near kind of the pressure we saw on the map and the gold that was acquired from inside ng blossom Looking up in the top lane, we have Jeremy Flip able to secure so much gold for himself, playing extremely safe. You know, he already has 13 CS lead. He already has the Sheen picked up, has the Stinger. You know, if left unattended, this Gangplank's going to scale out of control. Already level 9, getting towards this level 13 power spike. I'm, I'm ready to see how NG Blossom, or how Glitch Rising Phoenix is going to respond to NG Blossom's uh, top lane. Yeah, it's it's certainly going to be kind of a mountain to climb. You know, we see the the joys of playing Gangplank, however, you know, he's 101, but he hasn't left his lane, right? He pressed R one time, got a kill and an assist, and it's helped him build a little bit of a gold lead up there. As Exasperated did try to invade Skiz, should be able to walk away just fine, and they have a potential here to kind of collapse with the Rumble R here coming down and the Gangplank first roam. Skiz getting a lot of damage here on Exasperated. Exasperated forced to go away, but he move over. Black Oreo Cookies is putting out a lot of damage onto Faulted. And Faulted's forced to flash away and hide the back of the pit. But here comes that Gangplank ultimate you talked about, and he's going to get taken low, hopefully trying to avoid a little bit of the damage. And here it goes, Exasperated. Flag and Dragon over the wall. He's going to take him down with Cataclysm. Yeah, crucially though, Epic Fail Guy, the better sniper there, and because his ults actually hit Black Oreo Cookies, Black Oreo Cookies is finished off by Graves, still one for two, so you know, NG Blossom definitely gonna take that, and you know, Glacier Rising Phoenix just chasing a little bit too far, Gangplank was able to move first, 
Mordekaiser kind of got beat up a little bit, and we see Bard throwing out a Tempered Fate, trying to punish XDME for roaming, but unable to, as we see a good sidestep from Catenator. And I'm kind of wondering where Faulted was going when he flashed, right? Because he flashed up the river and then quickly realized, oh wait, J4 and Gangplank are here, and then just walked into the Dragon Pit with no way out. Uh, and unfortunately went down. And we're seeing just... I mean, non-stop action for this first game. You know, there's been no nerves at all in, the, in these playoffs, it feels like. Just constantly blows being thrown. You know, no one's... We don't see any 0-0 at 20 minutes because everyone's too scared to make a play. Yeah, and that... I think that's, on one hand, an exciting part of the, the playoff series, but at the same time can be a dangerous way to play the game. Um, especially for Glacier Rising Phoenix, they know that they have to play very proactively but at the same time they can't force anything against this very strong ng blossom lineup yeah and right now we just see a pretty big deficit coming out mid lane right down 30 cs down two kills four assists so even though black oreo cookies has that extra death he's certainly done a lot more for his team right now uh up about a thousand gold and we do see merc treads coming out like i was talking about earlier for faulted which will help him in the 1v1, but when you look over on the side of NG Blossom, they're mainly AD. As the safety of Bard is going to get Xylandus away from the river play, and we see yeah. a TP coming down. Able to safely port himself out of this area, but with this TP going in, now they're going to turn their attention over to Black Oreo Cookies. Faulted walking forward, looking to see if he can find anybody to pull him into the death realm. Black Warrior Cookies is here on the flank trying to see if they'll start it up. Equalizer ready to just pull out onto this team. Tempered Fate going out. It's going to connect on the Black Warrior Cookies. Black Warrior Cookies is all alone. Jeremy Flip dropping the Gangplank ulti, and Black Warrior Cookies forced to flash away. But now the attention is turned back to the bottom of the fight. XDME looking for a hook. And Glacier Rising Phoenix is trying to assert their dominance here on this dragon. Yeah, but scarily here, I mean, you know, we see Jeremy Flip a little indecisive if he's going to continue to farm or if he's just going to walk down. Uh, he'll probably almost have to look to TP as he's, but he's actually made it almost the whole way. Kind of like you were saying, the indecision from Glacier, Glacier Rising Phoenix getting pulled one way, getting pulled the other as... And XDME easily takes down Epic Fail Guy and he's forced to go away. Death from below picking up a lot of damage. And here we go, the Equalizer going down, Fault is trapped in a corner, he's got nowhere to run. Death from coming out trying to go on to Exasperated. But they're going to keep on moving forward, and they're looking for more blood. They're going in. Fault is going to be taken down low, and he's going to be picked up by Catenator. Yeah, and a great fight overall from the side of NG Blossom. And part of it comes off the back of Xylandus' Bardolt. While it did get a flash, the flash is the only thing he was able to achieve. And that's just not enough when you're playing against this kind of AoE Wombo team, right? You need to take down a member when you're throwing out the Tempered Fate. Or at least kind of deny people from joining a fight. And what we saw sadly was not able to result in any any kills or any pressure like that and jeremy flip was able to save his tp all right joey Dester tp down extremely early there and what we see from jeremy flip is he finishes pushing his top wave he resets to pick up his trinity force and he even started walking top lane at first he said you know i'm gonna go back up here and farm until they actually decide they want to fight eventually ends up walking down you know what he saves his tp and now we have that cooldown back up and we're looking here at second rift herald may be going over to the side of ng blossom especially with the way the map is looking now pretty uncontested you know and jeremy flip level 11 trinity force acquired he's going to be doing a lot of damage as soon as he gets hit or as soon as he gets his level 13 and you can see this the second rift herald started up xdme patrolling on the outskirts making sure no one's going to try to contest them exasperating and, and jeremy flip are going to pick up this rift herald pretty much for free as Faulted is just trying to hold his own in the bot lane. And oh, we got a cat. We have an equalizer coming out as Black Oreo Cookies did ignite. He's going to keep going forward. He's going to try to take him down. And Black, Re Black Oreo Cookies pick up the kill on the Faulted. But Faulted will return it back with that cheeky tower shot to uh, finish him off. Yeah, and you know, it's a one for one. We get Rumble and Gangplank ult. And I mean, I'm going to count that as a win for Glacier Rising Phoenix just because you know one we saw faulted when he died he was only worth about 180 gold anyways so he was got more gold there for the kill and then we actually see a huge fight kind of breaking out but an amazing tempered fate. fate there to go ahead and, and disrupt the flag and drag from exasperated and now skiz looking to go back forward with xylandus leading him through with the portal forcing exasperated to flash away but here comes the hook it's gonna pull 
Xylandus forward, and Xylandus is forced to go backwards, but he has a misplay, and he's going to be taken down by Xylandus. XDME. XDME may be thinking another tower shot was going to come through, and his ult would be able to finish it off. Um, but, you know, just a good response overall from Glacierizing Phoenix, showing they're not quite out of this game yet. You know, picking up that kill bot lane. I mean, right now, we're, we're seeing a pretty big deficit from the mid lane, right? We see, you know, down 50 CS. The score line's not looking too good. But he's able to, at least with the tower there, he's able to hold the zone. And, you know, when we look into these mid, mid and late game stages, as long as he can kind of stay under tower in the side lane, at least that's a win, right? As long as you can not completely lose the 1v1 so hard. You're getting towered over, over and over again, and they're not dying. Might be okay for them. Uh, but right now, you know, you're looking at Epic Fail Guy as the member to kind of step up. We see Ash already has the Hurricane finished. The Man Immune is going to be finished in about four to five minutes, maybe even less than that. And when that comes through, I mean, Ash is going to be dealing a lot of damage, as if she isn't already. And Jeremy Flip providing so much pressure in this top lane. He's already built himself such a nice lead. Almost 2,000 gold here. It doesn't look like much with only up, being up 20 CS, but those four kills of participation he's already picked up. You know, that's three assists, a whole kill by himself. He's able to just create himself that nice lead we talked about. As no one's been able to really put some pressure on him here. Yeah, he's holding almost 10 CS a minute right now. You know, we're looking 180 CS gangplank up there at 19 minutes. And... I mean, he's been really quiet this game. Oh, As... Epic Fail Guy! So much damage gonna take down XDME with a good arcade shift forward. And a Bardo coming out. On Black Oreo cookies, and now Black Oreo cookies is gonna drop the equalizer. Silanus is trapped in the, in the Cataclysm, and it's not gonna be enough. He's gonna pick him off. Black Joey Oreo Death cookies. do? Almost with the solo kill on the top side, too. In the back half, forcing the flash from Gangplank and Glacierizing Phoenix, you know, they're slowly holding their own in this game, right? We see just, that's the danger of this pike, is Jeremy Flips looking for a 1v1. Desu doing so much damage and able to heal through so much in this top lane. But we can see <laughs> Epic Fail Guy is, is holding on to this defense, <clears throat> trying to defend this tier 2 in the mid lane. It, it, it's just all over the place, there's so much bloodshed in this game. And it's really exciting to cast through, but now we see that Joey Desu might have gone forward just a little bit too much. You can see XDME, he's gonna flash forward, it's gonna connect! And here we go, Jeremy Flip running after him, trying to get him Good down. Flash. Gangplank passive ticking, and he's gonna take down Joey Desu, but here comes Epic Fail Guy, picking up the kill on Jeremy Flip. And XDME looking for the hook, trying to see if he can find Epic Fail Guy. Epic Fail Guy is able to make a quick dodge. And here's that TP you were talking about. Sadly though, you know, it's almost not even worth for the kills. They're looking to maybe trade mid lane here. Get another kill onto Black Oreo Cookies. Giz pumping out a lot of damage with that almost quick little died. Combination. But he almost goes down to that equalizer. Rumble able to put out a lot of damage. But unfortunately they lose the Infernal Dragon. And now it's three dragons to nil. Epic Fail Guy moving forward slowly, getting a lot of damage here on Exasperated. Exasperated is forced to keep backing away. Tempered Fate goes wide by Xylandus, but you can see Epic Fail Guy oh going my. back forward. Takes down Exasperated, and Epic Fail Guy's not done yet. He's looking to see if he can pick up XDME. But no, a good dodge by XDME here. Epic Fail Guy is definitely stepping up for his team. Man, Epic Fail Guy's really putting out some work this game, you know, really, really showing that he is a premier AD carry in this league, right? He might be down a little bit in CS, but we're seeing he has the ability to make these picks, and we're looking at an early Baron started up right at the 20-minute mark, and Glacierizing Phoenix is trying to 50-50 this game early on here. A lot of damage ticking, but Cat Ender's not willing to give it away just yet. You can see Jeremy Flip is here kind of sneaking up on the backside. Black Warrior Cookie's getting a little bit of chunk damage off on Joey Desu. Joey Desu taking kind of low, trying to get the shields come out, but XDME's gonna take him down with the death from below. And now Glacierizing Phoenix is on the run. Double kill for XDME, triple kill, and he's trying to go for blood. He's going after Fall to pull back off? in. And that's a quadra <laughs> kill, a penta kill for XDME. And that's what happens when you try to get an early Baron, but a huge Penta out of XDME, you know, Pike ult, much fun, well played. Uh, I mean, almost all this damage does come from Baron, 
but I mean that's just why we don't look for those early 20 minute barons and this game was manageable before that right we saw it was only about 2,000 gold difference and they had clawed their way back and because it's pike getting all these kills I mean the gold lead just went from two and a half thousand to eleven thousand in in 30 seconds Jimmy is showing up for his team here. Been a part of 14 out of 18 kills for NG Blossom. You know, they're doing so well. They they, they caught the misstep there by Glitcher Rising Phoenix as they tried to force that early Baron. But NG Blossom just wouldn't let it go. Catinator and XDME, as well as Black Warrior Cookies, were just all in their face and would not let them get away. It's honestly so tragic. I mean, I really feel like Glacier Eyes and Phoenix had done what they needed to to claw back in the game. And one of the points I was going to get around to talking about was Pike as a champion is very much a champion that only excels when you're ahead. And as soon as you start falling behind, I mean, we saw Epic Fail Guy. I mean, he was one-shotting the Pike, right? Like, Pike is not a tanky champion. And when you're not able to control the game as a huge fight's probably about to break Tempor out. Fate comes out, Chance Crystal Arrow, Faulted pulls Catnator into the Death Realm, and he's gonna looking for blood. He's gonna take him down low. Equalizer coming out. Catnator actually secures the kill against Faulted. And now Jeremy Flip looking to go forward with a nice little three-part combo. XGME's death from below goes wide. He's gonna have to go to Golden underneath the tower trying to stay alive. Black Lord cooks as well, Epic but fail Epic guy. Fail Guy with a huge true shot barrage gonna pick up XDME. But here comes the flag and drag forward. He's going to be taken kind of low. He has to immediately back away. Black Oreo cookies exasperated, oh, but the no. aggressive play by Epic Bell Guy is going to be taken down. Black Oreo cookies pick up that kill. And Black Oreo cookies just keep going to go forward. He might be taken low, and yes, he's going to pick up that kill on Desirelandis, but he will go down to the last turret shot. And this is honestly tragically where if the Baron buff was not on the side of Ninji Blossom, if we didn't see them just get you know, 6,000, 7,000 gold to make this lead bigger. That fight goes so much better for Glacier Rising Phoenix. I mean, Epic Fail Guy is doing so much work this game on the Ezreal, uh, but, you know, he just makes a bad play, right? We see him E forward, a little aggressive. He's kind of looking at maybe trying to get something back for his team, right? They've lost so much. He's just trying to make that pop off play. And, you know, when you're the mid lane Mordekaiser is unable to 1v1 the enemy AD carry before they have QSS or stopwatch or anything. It's rough, right? It's a very scary prospect, especially if we look at Infernal Soul going over to the side of NG Blossom here in 25 seconds. This is probably going to be a last stand. Death timers might be long enough here to just win the game if they're unable to win this fight. Or at least Glacier secure the Rising dragon. Phoenix knows they have to contest <clears throat> this dragon fight, but they're not sure if they can, as NG Blossom has such a huge lead right now. You know, they're building up this massive gold lead. They have, they're obviously a lot further ahead in their item builds. At the same time, you have mid wave already pushing and making its way up. Top wave is pushing as well for NG Blossom. Glacier Rising Phoenix has to take this fight, and if they're going to do it, they have to end it very quickly. And Ban, is this one of the, the best dragons? As a huge just fight breaks out, GP ults. And here we go, the Catacombs is going to go ahead and lock them all down. They're going forward, so much damage coming out. Catinator's pumping out a lot of damage, they're going back in forward. Faulted taking low, or sorry. Here we go, yeah. XDME is going to take out Faulted, and just like that, NG Blossom it secures the soul. Oh no, Skiz steals it! You know, they might have stolen the dragon, but NG Blossom is going to go ahead and steal the game. As with these death timers, I mean, Xylandis does have Bard ult. He can save both his Nexus Towers with one ult, but this should be the game going over to NG Blossom. And, you know, it might look a little dominant, but honestly, I think if Glacier Rising Phoenix doesn't make that one bad play, they're in a position to win this game, right? So it is a little scary for the side of NG Blossom, right? This game was a little closer than it might have you might have expected for a 1 versus 5 seed. And, and now as they're trying to end the game here. Knocking on the Nexus gates, but Fault's not ready to give up quite yet. He's going to shut down Black Oreo Cookies. Now Catinator flashing away, trying to see what he can do. Faulted knocks out, exasperated. And at the same time, they save... Oh no, the Nexus will go down! Itchy Blossom secures game one. The Catinator says he's saving his KDA by ending the game. It did not die on this Ash in game one. And I mean, at the end of the game, we're looking at a 16,000 gold lead, you know. And it, it just, they're only up 10 kills, right? So this, this gold lead 
like I was saying, it all came from that Baron play, right? If we don't see them throw the kind of the whole game there at this Baron, I mean, we might be looking at a, a different outcome. The big thing about this this series, this game, is Faulted did not did not look good, right? This this first game was really rough for Faulted, and we're gonna have to see throughout the series if he can step up more or if. Maybe if he was only subbing for the first game, and we'll see Klepto come back in. But something has to change, right? We need to see Glacier Rising Phoenix have a little bit more of an impact there with that mid lane. And if we can see some smarter map movement, maybe there's a chance for them in this game. But NG Blossom doing what they do best, out moving, out rotating people on the map, punishing mistakes. They got all the early dragons. As soon as Glacier Rising Phoenix makes a play on the map that could get them back in the game, they immediately counter it and. Rest is history. Good game one for NG Blossom. We'll definitely need to see how Glacier Rising Phoenix kind of recovers off that mental boom they might have just gone through, even though it was so close and just had that one minor misplay. We need to see what they're going to do going into game two. Everyone stick around. We have a series building on our hands.